Chapter 22 Liberty, True and Royal But the last Christian on earth will still be proclaiming the truth before the Antichrist, a royal truth that makes him a king, and the Antichrist can only treat him as a king, because his faith lifts him above the whole world and above the most terrible times. But the last word of the church militant will not be a word of apostasy. I picture to myself the last Christian confronting the supreme Antichrist at the end of those terrible days in which the insolence of man will rejoice stupidly and seeing the stars fall from the heavens. They bring him bound amidst the jeering of that filth of Cain and Judas that will still pass for the human race. And truly it will be the human race. The human species exalted to the summits of science and cast down to the lowest degree of abjection. The angels pay tribute to the star that has not fallen, and the Antichrist contemplates the only man alive who refuses to adore his lies and to say that evil is good. Hoping still to win him over, he asks this Christian how he would like to be treated. What are we to imagine the Christian replying? What can he reply, if not that he be treated as a king? He is the last of the faithful, and the last priest. It is he who is king. He is in possession of all the heritage of Abraham, with all the heritage of Christ. In his hands, bound by chains, he holds the keys that open the door to life eternal. He can baptize, he can forgive sins, and he can give the Eucharist. The other can give only death. He is king! And I defy the Antichrist, with all his power, not to treat him as a king, since the dungeon itself is to the Christian an empire, and the gibbet a throne. If anyone asks Catholics the same question, Catholics should give the same reply. Modern liberalism would like to be anointed by the children of the church, and it addresses them as the Saracen king addressed Louis of France, saying, If you wish to live, make me a knight. The captive saint replied to him, Become a Christian.